Don't know why he's firing. All we know is that he's a seeker after death. His or anyone else's, it doesn't matter. Unless you happen to be one of the men he's trying to kill, unless you happen to be a cop. The weapon he's shooting cost $128.47, tax included. Part of that tax might have gone to pay the salary of a patrolman, which in this city starts at $749 a month. That's not much, but no one's ever established a going rate for a man's life. Not all cops get killed, of course, but they know it's there, part of the package. Any cop knows this is how his life could end. Here's how it begins. as simple as it used to be. We need a new kind of cop. And this is what you think would be a new kind of cop, huh? Yeah. All right, men, line up at the tables according to your last initial. Okay, fellas, have your forms ready. Make sure you've signed in all the red check spots. You know, Neil, when you recite the Lord's Prayer, I'll bet you say, give the mayor and me our daily bread. <laughs> okay, Eddie, okay. Well, you got what you wanted, didn't you? Huh? Yeah. Kids fresh out of college, specialists from the services. Yeah, you got what you wanted. You won. Great. And there's your prize. 35 winners. A whole class of bright young men. And I've never seen a smaller, shorter, weirder bunch in my life. I hope you're satisfied. I'd be a lot more satisfied if I thought you were not starting out to torpedo the whole idea. Well, I won't torpedo, but I don't have to. This thing's got self-destruct written all over it. Uh, William Andrew Gillis, B.A., Denison University, Granville, Ohio. Sylvania Burnham High School, Sylvania, Ohio. Okay, you take this to that table behind me there, Willie, and the officer... In... Uh, it's not Willie, sir. Bill's okay, or Will, but not Willie. You look like a Willie to me. You mean nobody's ever called you Willie before? All the way through pre-med, and then you drop out. Why, Mr. Whitman? I'm not so sure that's any of your business. Maybe not. It seems like an awful waste of time, that's all. It's my time to waste. True. That's your hair and beard to cut as of tomorrow. That present style isn't exactly departmental length. Your first class is 8.15 tomorrow morning. And as of 8.15 tomorrow morning, no beard, and your hair will be neatly trimmed one and a half inches above the collar. And if it isn't? Then you can sleep in, Mr. Whitman. Kevin Lassiter, Grinnell College, Omaha, Nebraska, Vista one year. All right, Mr. Lassiter, you take this uh, table right over there. Thank you, sir. Oh, sorry, I was just trying to see if you were married. I'm trying to find a roommate. Oh, wow. Did you pick the wrong man? My name's Lassiter, Kevin Lassiter. Oh, William Gillis, glad to know you. It's nice to meet you, Willie. Well, now, he looks like he's my kind of guy. Yeah, I was afraid you were going to say that. Why? Because he looks normal and because I said he looks like he could be my kind of a guy? You're suspicious of him already? No, not because of that. Well, then what? Name's Mike Danko. He quit the Air Force to join this program. 
you're 10 years in, making a lot more money there than he's going to make here. And I just can't figure out why he joined this program. Gentlemen, please refer to the board showing all of the available residences within the area. I'm sure that you'll find adequate housing for your needs. Hey, uh, excuse me. Hi, are you married? No, but I think I ought to warn you. I'll expect a very long courtship before we talk about it again. No, you see, what I had in mind is, would you be interested in, in rooming together and furthering the cause of racial harmony? No. Well, would you be interested in rooming together and saving a few bucks? Oh, little fellow, I think you and me have just found a common ground. <laughs> OK. Let's see. Uh, how about this one? 95 a month, furnished. <laughs> Sounds good. OK, we better hustle. We've had five apartments, and four have been taken already. At least we can count on having a cop nearby if we need one. Oh, wow. Really, really wow. Hey, Jared, is this straight? Hey, come on, man. Is it straight or not? Everything around here is straight. <laughs> Square and straight. Yeah, hang it. <laughs> oh, come on. It's a furnished apartment. Give us some time, huh? This ought to hold you till the pizza oh, comes. Food. Come on, Kevin. Yeah. Take a rest. Hey, well, hey, babe, are you sure that we can afford this on a rookie salary? You know, maybe we should move the couch over here. All right. I mean, I know I look like a trombone player for Lawrence Welk. What are you laughing? <laughs> It's just hard to get used to. Yeah, it's just hard to get used to, right? <laughs> They're here, the food. Why is it that when your wife's in the food? Where were you guys, huh? We were gonna call the cops. Well, we would have been here a lot sooner, but the old boy had to take a little rest down on the stairs. Ah, oh, bless you, bless you for your kindness, youngster. When you cut that pizza, make sure it is neatly trimmed an inch and a half above the collar. <laughs> Watch that blinking. basic weapon. And hut! Are there any questions? Yes, Mr. Whitman. Eyes front. Yes, sir. I don't understand. What I mean is, why do we have to use guns at all? Why can't we use something like uh, tranquilizer darts or some kind of gas or rubber bullets? And why is the gun the only thing that we use? Tranquilizers have not been perfected yet. Gas is indiscriminate. Rubber bullets have only shown results in crowd control. That's why the gun. Thank you, sir. In England, guns are outlawed, and they use billy clubs. We are not in England, Mr. Whitman. Thank you, sir. Then why is it this gun? I mean, why is this gun so special? In the service, they use 45s, don't they? Why? You want to answer that, Dango, or should I? Yes, sir. You shoot at a guy with a 45 and hit him in the hand, chances are you're going to take his whole arm off. The same wound with a 38. He'll have a hole in his hand, but he'll have his hand, sir. It's a more humane weapon, Mr. Whitman. Thank you, sir. Are there any more questions? Yes, Mr. Whitman. That target, sir, that we're shooting at, why is it the silhouette of a man? I mean, why can't we shoot at something like a bullseye? Because a bullseye has never been convicted of robbing a gas station, son. Right face! No, I know you. You used to 
Jackie is from Majorette for Jefferson High School. Well, I played football for Dee Whit Clinton. Yeah, and I was a bathtub for the FBI. Now let go. I mean it. They hire me to be a moving target, you know? certain whether or not you're a real man. Maybe you got something going back in the closet you don't want anybody to know anything about, right? So you want to wear a gun, carry a club, real rough trade. That's what you're really looking for. Ain't that it now? Well, just hold it, cool it. Now, whatever you boys decide to do about your hang-up, that's your own thing. Now, me and the brother here, we don't have no problems like that. It's only white folks get themselves in things like that. Ain't that right, brother? I'm talking to you, nigga. What's the matter, honey child? White folks got your tongue? Well, you just keep pushing it, man, you know? Oh, beautiful, Webster. That's beautiful. Your instructions were not to respond to any assault, verbal or otherwise. Did you hear those instructions? Yes, sir. You jive cop-out artist. Now you're playing the man's game. No self-respecting black man would ever be a cop pig. There's not one good reason for a black man to wear this pig uniform, is there? You're wrong, sir. There are a lot of reasons. Yeah, name one. Just one. Name it. Stop you white cops from leaning on my brothers. Yes, sir. Sure is one good reason. Sir. Ice front! Get those batons up. Straighten them out. Dress up those batons. You may make mayor yet. Come on, get them up there. Get them up there. A policeman doesn't only have one job, he's got nine. Midwife, family counselor, sharpshooter, race driver, lawyer, but... Mr. Gellis, would you mind sharing your conversation with us? I'm sure it's much more interesting than mine. Uh, well, sir, I, uh... I was just wondering, how come our uniforms aren't blue? Oh, you were? The uniforms of a rookie are tan. The mouth of a rookie is shut. Yes, sir. You will have seconds, correction, split seconds. We'll I have don't legal advise you to date his sister. To settle. They're all tough. And if you are wrong, remember, the police officer is as liable to prosecution as any ordinary citizen. Now, the Miranda decision. Lassiter, sir. Yes, Lassiter, what is it? I know you mean well, but we didn't get into this to listen to war stories. I know that we've got a lot of tough decisions to make as policemen. But truthfully, aren't most of them done by the book? All right, let's take a by-the-book situation. Hypothetical, but by the book. You are summoned to the scene of an accident. A party is injured. A second unit handles traffic control. What's your first move? Call an ambulance. The man has a compound fracture, arterial bleeding. He's unconscious. Your next move. Guard against shock. Immobilize the fracture. Pressure bandage on the arterial wound. 
Alert the hospital that the man will need a transfusion. Very good. Fine. Your first aid works. The man comes to and tells you that he is a Christian scientist. Now, what is uh, Patrolman Lassiter's next move? What are the rights of the injured party? What are the rights of Patrolman Lassiter? And what is Patrolman Lassiter's answer? The Miranda decision, admonition of rights. The suspect shall be informed, one. here. But I am here! I am somebody! I am somebody! Come on, move it, move it! Come on, pick up those feet! Lean into it! Get those knees up! Lift your feet up, you quads! Miss Mile, three times every week, Webster. If you don't get your time down under seven minutes, you're going to be out. Do you understand? Out. Yes, sir. That's a dumb requirement, but it is a requirement. So you better keep hacking at it. All right, fall in. Once we're on the track and back to the showers. Hang loose, man. You're going to make it. Oh, man, I could do it if I wanted to. Just don't want to be a racial stereotype. <laughs> right. Hey! Soaking your feet and nights the trash has to be put out. Oh, well, just trying to build your character, little fellow. Just trying to build your character. Thank you. No, it's okay. I appreciate it's it. It's all right. You got it down seven minutes, 14 seconds. That's your best yet. Uh, it's still not good enough. If I don't get it on to seven minutes tomorrow afternoon, Riker will boot me. He's got no choice. You still wish you'd become a fireman like your old man? No, I'm not looking to be like anyone. Don't get it wrong. Uh, what my old man did was fine for him. But I could never see much more than the fires in his job. And I've got a lot more to find than that. You know, sometimes you and I talk the same language, and sometimes... I mean, what's to find in this job? Oh, I don't know, really. Uh, law, if a guy wants to go to school at night. Community relations, if a guy thinks he can cut it. Politics, maybe. Senator Webster. Why did you stop a senator? <laughs> I don't know, I guess because I, I, I'm not sure if a cop can be elected president. Oh. All I know is that all my life, people have been looking at me and deciding who I was and what I was and what I could be. I'm going to find out for myself. How about you? How do you like it so far? Oh, uh, me? I like it fine, I guess. I, I like living off base. I like to work. Besides that, my wife lives here in town, and maybe it'll give me a chance to see her and get to know her again. Your wife? I didn't know you were married. That was the problem. Neither did we. You want a sandwich or something? Huh? Oh, no, man, I don't think so. 
I think I'll go upstairs and get some sack down. I'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, later. See ya. Hey, Terry? I'm wondering, uh, can I ask you a favor? Yeah. Well, uh, this may sound kind of dumb, but, well, you know, the, the town I come from is kind of a little place, and, well, if, if I'm going to be a cop in a big city, then I've got to learn... Do you think that maybe you could take me down to the ghetto sometime? No. And it doesn't sound dumb, man. It just sounds wrong. Wrong because you'd never ask me to guide you into a poor white neighborhood, just a poor black one. Wrong because... You never learned to swim holding on to a life preserver. And my name is Terry, not Tom. Well, if, uh, if I go down there alone, can I at least mention your name? <laughs> I'd like to buy a rifle, please. Well, so we've got rifles and rifles, as you can plainly see for yourself. Any particular make in mind? Um. Uh, what did you plan on using it for? I think I'd like a high-powered rifle, please. Yes, sir. High-powered rifles are right over here. And with a scope. Yes, I think. One with a big scope. Yes, sir. We have just the thing. Big scope and all. Sure as you. <laughs> Gideon decision, while not affecting the day-to-day -day duties of a police officer, did signal a trend in the court's decisions, a trend toward more vigorous efforts at protecting the rights of the accused. Ah! Ah! Get back! Get back! Get in there! Get, you just witnessed a murder! You got 30 seconds to provide me an accurate description of the witness, starting as of now. Come on, tall, short, light, dark, glasses, no glasses. Revolver, automatic, one shot, two shots, three shots, four shots. Come on, move it, move it, get going. Light hair, dark hair, hat, no hat. 20 seconds. What do he look like? What kind of shoes is he wearing? Color of his pants, color of his coat, was a long coat, jacket. 15 seconds. 35 guys in that class. Not one of us saw the same thing. Wasn't anybody even close? Ah, oh, Mrs. Lassiter, you'll be proud to know that your husband's description proved to be the most accurate. Congratulations. Um, you think you could be a little more physical about it? You're really turned on by this, aren't you? Mm-hmm. No, I mean the police academy, the whole program. Yeah. Yeah, I really am. You know, Mom, it's exciting. I don't mean Boy Scout exciting. But if there can be a new kind of lawman, well, then, then all of this really counts for something. Yeah, go on. Come on, man, you've got to make it. Come on, Come on, Make it. You got four. Come on, 
He's pacing him. That's not fair. Why isn't it fair? Come on! Come on! Come on! You can make it, man! Come on! I got him! Take him! I got him! Go! Come on now! One step! Left! 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 Pull! Left! Left! Pull! One! 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 Come on, Terry! Pick it up! Go! Pick it up! Come on, Terry! Pick it up! Come on! Pick it up! Come on, let's go! Go! Come on, man! Did he make it? All right, Webster, you made it. Mr. and Mrs. Swift, this must be a very happy day for you both. Well, thank you very much. Oh, my name is uh, Loomis, uh, Toby Loomis. I'm just what you call a cop buff. <laughs> I come to all these graduations. I try to lend a little moral support. <laughs> Not much of that around nowadays. See, I'm a civil servant, too, so I know how it is. Oh, I see. Now, look, I don't want to keep you. I suppose you're going out to celebrate. Well, you should, so, Bajetta, you take good care of that man of yours now. He's one of our boys in blue, you know. Yes, I'll do my best. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Bye now. Bye now. Well, I know it takes all kinds, but there really ought to be some kind of a limit. Have you ever met him before? Him? Are you kidding? How did he know my first name? Okay, what are we doing? Okay, what are hey, we doing? Hey, where do brand new pigs go to celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to the Big Apple? Oh, uh, Joe's, uh, Joe's. How about the pizza joint? Pizza's good. Hey, Bill, why don't we all go to our place? Hey, why don't we all go to your place? Yeah, why don't we all go to your place? To our place. First time today. Let's don't get antsy on us, huh? For the first couple of days, we'll be showing you the precinct, and that's about all. Now, I know you all want to go out and catch your first bank robber. But we'd rather you know how to write a parking ticket before you get all that heroic. Uh, Webster, Lassiter, and uh, Whitman, you'll go on duty with Officer Shaw. Now, Officer Shaw knows the area better than anybody. If you keep your mouth shut and your ears open, you might learn a lot. The rest of you go on Santa Patrol standard sweeps. Oh, yeah, one more thing for you rookies. Officer Shaw is retiring at the end of this week. And, uh, well, let's see, Whitman is on duty, but the rest of you will be off. Well, now, you may not know Officer Shaw as well as the rest of us do, but nonetheless, you're invited to his retirement party in the rec hall at the Academy at 8 o'clock Friday night. We'll be very disappointed if you're not there. Very. Disappointed. Admission is 20 bucks a couple. 
Dismissed. Now I know what RSVP stands for. What's that? Rookie's shafted very promptly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> himself a gun gonna blow his foot off someday. This cocktail lounge, bad news place. Got those waitresses wearing next to nothing. Somebody gets ideas, gets grabby. Somebody else decides to play cowboy to the rescue. The roof comes off the place every Saturday night, regular as clockwork. Come on, let's take a ride. Kind of a student outfit in that house over there. Don't know quite what they're up to. Well, is that any of our business? Only when they start throwing bombs. You mean if they start throwing bombs? When, if, same difference. Well, maybe you think I'm getting a little twitchy seeing boogeymen around every corner. But let me tell you something. For a cop, there just may be a boogeyman around the corner. You'll be thinking just like I do before not too very long. Not on your life. No, on yours. Oh, you really got to tell us that it's a jungle out there? Combination quicksand and cesspool. And he wears that uniform to bed. After he's advised his wife of her rights. Sure, he's just like all those teachers at pre-med. All they ever see is the disease. They, ne they never see the patient who's being hurt. God, it's the system. Because you're really just as helpless. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. You should take too much on yourself. You let it eat that you share it. I just want some things in this damn world to have some kind of rhyme or reason, that's all. Just never... Uh, never does. God, do you know what I heard coming off of duty? I heard that there's some guy on a highway with a high-powered rifle and he's shooting at cars. He killed two people. Now, can you imagine that? God, that has to be insane. Oof, don't think about it. <laughs> Honey, how can you not think about something like that? There is a madman loose with a rifle. You can't ignore something like that. You have to do something about it.
the kids, Mom. The way they looked at us. And I don't mean the, just the blacks or, or the poor kids or the Chicanos. I mean, every single kid we saw looked at us with, I don't know, dislike, distrust. Do you remember how it was the first day when we got in the village in Puerto Rico? The way they looked at us then, it was the same thing. The same sense of being an outsider, that distance. By the time you left, those kids thought you were the Pied Piper. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's true or not. But, um, uh, I'm too tired to fight about it. I wasn't thinking about fighting. Order me a hamburger and coffee, will you? And I'll be right in. Okay. Separated for a whole year. You haven't written. You know I never write letters, Jill. Mike, you can't just pop in here and expect. But do you expect, Mike? Mm -hmm. No, really. I, I wanted you to know I was out of the service. You're out of the Air Force, you mean? Well, you always said that was our biggest problem. You should have called me, warned me. Why, you would have just said stay away. Wouldn't you? Yes. Would have been a lie, wouldn't it? Look, Jill, there's a kind of party Friday night. Can you come with me? Jill, move it, huh? Please? Mike, I've got to go. Jill? Please. Uh, uh, look, I'll pick you up here 7.30 Friday, okay? Okay. All right. 7.30 Friday. I'll change shifts with somebody. It's nice to see you again. Watching you operate out there, you look pretty good for an old timer. It's like riding a bike, you never forget how. She's a good looking chick. Well, you may not believe this, but that was no chick, that was my wife. Really? Hey, 
Terry, do you think they're going to be uptight about us leaving early? Are you kidding? All that money was like 20 bucks anyway, right? Hey, uh, girls, why don't you stay here? Come on, guys, let's go get the cars. 20 bucks and we still have to get our own cars? What is that? Still, I think it's crazy to marry a policeman. The way things are today, you don't know when he's coming back or if he's coming back. Oh, I guess you learn to live with it. It's just part of the life, that's all. I sound like it's Kevin's retirement party instead of Officer Shaw's. Can you imagine what his wife had to put up with all these years? I think she's lucky. And I think we are, too. Well, I think I'm freezing to death. Me, too. I'm going to the car. I am, too. Why do you think you're lucky? Oh, it's not important what I think, besides my English. Oh, but it's really important to me. You know a lot more about it than I do. Well, it's just that when a used car salesman or an insurance man, when he leaves the house in the morning, his wife pecks him on the cheek, you know, because she is positive that he will be back for dinner. But someday he might not be back. A heart attack, a car accident. And she'll spend years remembering that she didn't tell him how much she did love him. Because when you know you can't count on tomorrow, you make sure not to waste a day. I may lose Sherrod. But he'll know he was loved when he walked out the door. Oh, your English is just great. Come on. Remember me to Toby uh, Loomis. We met at your graduation. Uh, you and I and your charming wife. Hey, how are you, Mr. Loomis? I'm fine. I'm just fine. That's good. Hey, what a shame you have to work in the night of Officer Shaw's retirement party. I uh, know. That's uh, my wife. She went and she's representing both of us. Oh, that's nice. Oh, do you mind if I have a cup of coffee? Well, I, I'll tell you, Mr. Lewis, sir, they're really not very high on civilians being back here. Really, not even the most uh, fanatical of police force. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. I don't exactly work for the department, but I do work with them. You see, part of my job is to handle all that paperwork that has to be processed in interdepartmental matters, you know, the pension fund, the health and welfare. It's all pretty dull, but it does have to get done, so they tell me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another part of my job is to... Uh, would you mind if I sat down? No, go right ahead. Just be my guest. Uh, another part of my job is to process the uh, security checks we run on the new civil servants. Uh, criminal records, that sort of thing. Look, I don't know if we're playing some kind of game, but if we are, I really don't know the rules. Oh, it's hardly a game. No, it's much more serious than that. Your wife entered this country illegally, and I'm required to report that fact to the immigration authorities, and I suppose they're required to uh, deport her. No. I really don't know what you're talking about. My wife is a registered alien. A registered alien, yes, but lawfully registered, no. She lied about a police record. Your wife was arrested in 1969 for possession of illegal drugs. Not true. It's true, sir. Very true. And very sad. You know, truth is often a very sad commodity. But it need not always be that way. You see, in my work, I find out all sorts of sad and true things about people, and they're good people, good, hard-working civil servants. Come and on, I come have on, to ask Lewis. myself, should I be the one mm -hmm. to put them through the embarrassment and the bother of all those interdepartmental hearings, in your case, of having that sweet little lady deported for God heaven knows how long? Or maybe I should try to do the humane thing and uh, be a helper and not a destroyer. Come on, Lois, come on. You have a talk with your wife. You satisfy yourself that what I'm telling you is the truth. Then you and I will have our little chit-chat. <laughs> Stop playing games with me, Lomas. Now you just tell me what it is you want. I'm 
I'm certain that you and I can come to some sort of uh, equitable understanding. Uh, sure. Somebody put a little money in your purse. Pocket. Yeah, well, whatever. What? What did you think? That a fellow he bust for illegal drugs was some kind of a joke? Is that what you thought? No. Well? Well? Don't interrupt him. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't interrupt him. Don't yell. And I'll tell you what happened. There were four of us. We were going on a holiday. Four girls? Two boys, two girls. We went into the mountains, then down onto the continent. One of the boys bought some drugs there. We didn't know about it. When we crossed back into Sweden, the drugs were found. We were all charged, found guilty, given suspended sentences. Then when I applied to come here, a friend of mine worked in the record bureau. I lied about the arrest. Then when the State Department verified the facts, she arranged for the verification. It is the only lie I have ever told you. Well, it looks like your friend no longer works in the Bureau of Records. Sheriff, if I hadn't lied, we wouldn't be together. And doesn't that count for something? Counts for everything, Flecker. It just counts for everything in the world. What are we going to do, Jared? Oh. Well, lucky you had your friend in the Bureau of Records, eh? You know, guess I have mine, too. Yes, ma'am. But now he was testifying on the new tax bill before the state legislature. Yes, ma'am. Hold your calls. What? I said hold your calls. This is important. And Lynn, hold my calls, will you? I'll get back to them later. Okay, Eddie, I'm listening. There's a cocktail lounge in my precinct. It's called the Open House. Every once in a while over the past few years, they've tried showing stag films, and I don't mean movies about Bambi's father. Hit them a couple of times. They've always managed to wriggle out in court. Now we hear that they've imported a few uh, very friendly, lively ladies to complete the picture. But look, what does this have to do with me? We've raided them twice, and each time they've come up as clean as a convent. We raid them again and come up empty, and they're going to yell harassment. Look, Eddie, I know you have your problems, but... Well, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, hell, I'm positive that one of the guys in our precinct is tipping them off and we're going to make a raid. But what does this have to do with the mayor? Neil, do you think I'd bother the mayor's office with something that's really police work if it weren't important? 
Now, obviously, somebody's on the take. And word on the street has it that the guy on the take in our precinct is one of the new guys. One of our new guys. Kevin, come on. There's the money, right? I think we better swing by the open house, like Riker said, and keep an eye on things. What's the hurry, Super Cop? Well, I just want to do what he says, you know? Ludlow, 7 0 from control. Disturbance in bar at 1711 South Clark. Roger, we're on our way. Seven, seven, well, I guess the open house will just have to wait. I just wanted to be close to somebody. Sure, well, close already counts in horseshoes. You got him squared away? Yeah, listen, why don't we let the other unit run him back to the station? Huh? Well, why not us? I don't know, I thought maybe we'd run by the open house, make sure things are cool over there. We can make this report up in a half an hour or so. Huh? OK, I'll see how many we're pulling in. They probably got room. Just turn around, let's go. Just don't shove. Come on. Don't push. Uh, I get so tired of people pushing me all. Yeah, waitress maintains you're doing a little pushing on your own. So I should climb to be friendly. Well, I don't know. I haven't checked the newspapers today. Come on, get in. Get in. Watch your head. Hey, Jared. It's okay. Come on. Well, of course I am. It's because I love this damn job so much. Come on, roll, will you? Yeah, sure. Listen, why don't you stay here? I'll handle it. You ought to stay and cover the radio in summertime when all the mosquitoes are out. Well, what must be convenient? Being able to scratch behind your ear with your hind leg. Let's get back to the station. You won't be in such a hurry once you hear what I just heard. 
What's that? The bust on the guy with the cane back in the beer bar. It won't stick. Why not? Forgot to inform the guy of his rights. They had to let him back on the street as soon as they got to the station. Ludlow 70. Checked open house. All clear. Ludlow 70. Repeat your message. Checked open house. All clear. Ludlow 70 out. <laughs> How much is that? A dollar. Hey, buddy. I was just wondering. There wasn't something I could uh, fill out the evening with. Uh, something or someone. That's Felix's choice. <laughs> Door under the exit sign back there. Thanks. there. You want to join the party? It's 20 bucks. I don't think so. Why not? Because the way my luck is running tonight, that'll turn out to be my sister up there. What is your official designation? Police officer. Police officer. You're not fit to be a crossing guard at a pet cemetery. Right, look, give me the benefit of the doubt. Well, How not... many times do you estimate you've been told about arrest procedures? A thousand times, a million. How many times do you estimate it's going to take before you learn those procedures? Look, Sergeant, I know. I made a mistake. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Oh, yeah, I made a mistake. I made lots of mistakes. But when I did, I was man enough to have guts to shut up, take my lumps for him without copping out. Any other comments, Officer Whitman? No, sir. Hey, Jared. Don't let him get to you, man. He'll cool off. Yeah, man, if it was one of the old cops, he'd never sweat it like that. Well, it wasn't one of the old cops, it was me. And if he doesn't get off my back, I'll deck him. Oh, yeah. Good move. That'll really get him on your side. No question about it. service working in the missile silo. They taught us to keep an eye on each other to watch for certain things. Uh, signs that the pressures were getting to somebody. He's got that look. <laughs>
Okay, move out. Eddie, there's no time, Neil. Some cook killed three people in a bar on South Clark Street, and he's running loose. Talk no time! All right, over here. Now get this down and don't make me repeat it. We need all the time we can get. Male Caucasian, middle 40s, brown hair, heavy set, light trousers, green raincoat. The bartender says the same fellow they had trouble with earlier tonight. Yeah, it's the same guy that I put back out on the street. We'll turn north through the industrial section, then we'll turn east on Reading to the end of the precinct. You got it? All right, move it. Cars two and six stay here. Cover this rat trap. <laughs> Car, 7-0. Sniper spotted at Primrose Stadium. Suspect is armed and dangerous. Proceed immediately to stadium. Copy. Suspect sniper spotted at Primrose Stadium. Advise caution. Car, 1-8. Sniper spotted at Primrose Stadium. Suspect is armed and dangerous. Proceed immediately to stadium. Proceed immediately. Advise car, 2-4. Sniper spotted at Primrose Stadium. Suspect is armed and dangerous. Proceed immediate car. Three seven. Sniper spotted in Primrose Stadium. Suspect is armed and dangerous. Proceed immediately to stadium. Proceed to stadium. Proceed to stadium. Proceed to stadium. down last time he asked me to go somewhere with him. Okay, move it. Move it. Now! Move out! Go get him!
gas. Yeah. I said tear gas. Sit up, yeah. All right, we'll lay down a barrage from both tunnels. That'll give you about uh, eight or nine seconds. Can you make it? Yeah, I'll get there. Right, phase. Port, ho. Ready. Fire. Ready. Fire. Ready. Fire. Head, hut. Half left, phase. Present.
Well, I don't know whether I told you. But I think your guys might be all right. They're not mine anymore. They're yours now. I'll take them. Even when they fail? Oh, Neil, Neil. You expected much too much of them. And I expected much too little. That Loomis caught that kid in a bind and the kid buckled. Well, that's a shame. But there's no warranty on human beings, Neil. And there never has been. I'll tell you one thing, though. Jared Whitman died in an act of courage. And he died with honor. That's not a bad epitaph for a cop. Hell, that's not a bad epitaph for anybody.